Hey everyone! So I've been getting a lot of video, uh, a lot of questions on my videos. Excuse you. I'm getting a lot of questions about my filming setup. What kind of camera do I use? What kind of lights do I use? And I wanted to make this video about how I make my YouTube videos on the cheap. I like to be as savvy as possible about my setup. I don't have a DSLR, I don't have an expensive camera, I don't have an expensive lighting equipment, I don't have a MacBook. So I kind of wanted to share all of that information with you guys. Maybe you could relate, especially if you're just starting out. I recommend listening to this video and kind of hearing what I have to say because I've gotten this far without all of those things. So I think maybe I have some sort of method that's working for me. So the first thing I want to talk about are cameras. All of my original videos, probably the first 25 videos I've ever made, were all shot on my iPod Touch. Now this is an iPod Touch 4th generation and I bought this from, this is refurbished from GameStop, you can tell. And this is refurbished from GameStop, they start at about $70 and you can see it kind of just looks like your iPhone and you can go to camera and it's still a really good quality it has the front facing camera and everything which is great for taking video because then you can record yourself and see what you're doing and for me that was really helpful because I could see what I was doing and for almost $80 to have an entire camera setup was great. Especially cameras with front-facing cameras are very expensive and they're more of the, on the professional skill level. So for me, I used to just lean this up against my windowsill and look into it and film. If you have, so this I, iPod is outdated. If you have the fifth generation, I'm really certain that you can download iMovies to it and then you can film and edit all from the same product. So that's awesome. <clears throat> and I wanted to mention my iPhone 5. So this is just my phone that I use as my cell phone, but for my earlobe reconstruction vlog and all of the videos before that, I was using my iPhone 5 to record. And if John ever got any clips of me, it was off of his iPhone 4. And I used to have the iMovie app right on here to edit and I always do all of my voiceovers on here if you ever... I haven't done one recently, but under voice memos right here, this is where I record all of my voiceovers. I think the audio equipment on these iPhones is amazing. If I'm ever doing any sort of voiceover stuff, I always use this. And then you can email it to yourself and apply it to your video when you're editing. The camera on these things are amazing. I don't think they jeopardize your quality, especially if your content is good. These are great. And mostly all of you probably already have an iPhone in your pocket or in your house. Maybe you have an old one, especially if you have an old one. Whip it out and use it. I think that they're amazing. And they pick up natural light so well. The other camera that I want to share is my Fujifilm camera and I bought this camera used from the electronic exchange store. It's called C CEX um, and there's one on South Street. I've seen them in other places. When I went to Washington DC I saw them and they're really great especially if you have electronics around your house. You can always trade them in. I got this for $40 and I think the quality on it is amazing. The only thing it doesn't have is the front facing camera, but if I turn this on, you might remember these pictures that I took and I think the quality of them is perfect. It is a 14 megapixel camera, so for $40 to get something like that, that's great. Um, I did upgrade the memory card, so this 16 gigabyte memory card I bought was probably around $12, and I think it's great. One of the downsides of this camera is it does take batteries, but my batteries are just Energizer 
rechargeable batteries they plug into the wall they're great to have around your house anyway because my Swiffer WebJet takes stupid batteries so I'm glad I have it anyway it's never been a waste of money so I love this camera too and if you're confident at what you shoot then this is great I used to use this video this camera primarily to film my friends I have like some cool skateboard videos on here that I always I really loved, I've never used up that entire memory card. This plugs right, right into the computer and the quality is amazing. So for $40 used, this camera has never let me down. And the place that I got it had a one year warranty. So if you're filming for six months and you upgrade your equipment or you feel like this is whatever, you can return it for the full money back. Or you also, if you keep it in good condition, like I accidentally got spray paint all over this, but if I would have kept this in better condition when I finally did upgrade, I could have sold this back. So buying cameras used is a really great option. And this is the camera that I normally film with and this is my Samsung NX Mini. And I bought it with a package that came with this stabilizing lens. What I really like about this camera is that the screen can face up and then it's ready for you to shoot. And then you can face it down and this is your screen this camera makes really high quality photos for me and it isn't a professional camera it is just like a fun little camera it has features on it where you can directly send images to your phone so that's helpful for me when I'm doing Instagram and stuff and for me this camera cost me around $250 but it was a really great investment and this is once again what it looks like. All of my audio is done through this camera. I do not have any external equipment so that's why I'm often apologizing for construction and anything happening outside. Just so I did buy my Samsung X Mini off of Amazon and it was not before we shopped all around for it. We went to Best Buy and I received like awful customer service there. I really was not happy with my experience in Best Buy, but I also understand that I went to the Best Buy in Philadelphia, so they are busy, but, and things are put away, so there aren't a lot of things I can try. But I did mention, when I did get a hold of somebody, I did mention this camera and they said, oh, that's the terrible camera, we don't sell it anymore. And I was like, oh, can you recommend a cam camera similar? That's when they recommended the DSLR, and it wasn't a camera I wanted to buy. Like I said before, I don't know how to use it. I'm not a professional photographer. I did not want to sink myself over my head. So I wanted to find something definitely more user-friendly. So we did go to Walmart, and let me tell you, our experience was so bad at Walmart that John was also buying work pants that day and they gave him half off of his order. We spent on the clock a half hour waiting for somebody to come to electronics and open the camera case for us and I couldn't believe it. It was crazy. I recognize like once again we're in Philadelphia it's a really busy Walmart but it was like a Wednesday I don't know late afternoon and John was buying Dickies and the guy felt so bad he gave us literally half off. But that goes without saying I did not buy any electronics there. The camera I wanted, they only had the display model and they would not let me buy the display model. So I did go on Amazon and I'm happy that I did because I bought a package that came with my stabilizing lens that does not come stock with the camera you had to buy that extra and my camera also came with Photoshop and I haven't even taken Photoshop out of the package but I was excited that my camera did come with Photoshop in case I ever want to use it I did have to buy the memory card separate but it was easy it's a mini memory card so I couldn't take it out of my other camera but I was happy to buy it I bought it off Amazon and a courier came to my house to give it to me it was awesome he actually called me on the phone and was like, hey, I'm here. And I was like, who's here? It was really great, really great customer service, really quick shipping. Like I said on here, 
the camera is $242, but you can also see there's options to buy it used, which I always recommend. Buying used is amazing. So those are all of my cameras. Like I said, the first 25 of my videos are all shot with an iPod Touch. You can use it too, it's amazing. If you have an iPad, you can use your iPad, and editing on your iPad is probably so much easier. I wanna talk about lighting. For me, there's three different ways that I achieve really great lighting. And you can too, for less than $10, I swear. And the first thing and the most important thing is natural light. And natural light is what I film 99% of my videos with. I try to wake up, I'm on a filming schedule, and I try to wake up around 8 o'clock, get ready, have breakfast, do whatever I need to do in the morning, and by then, the sun is in my room. Right, how it is now. Figure out where the sun is in your life, do some research in your room, have a lazy day, and just watch where the sun falls because I like to film between 9 and 2. Other than that, I'll catch rush hour out the window, it's really loud. Or I'll, the sun is behind the buildings across the street and I miss it. When I'm missing the sun, I'll usually film in my backyard. And you've seen videos in my backyard, it's really great, a lot of natural light, all the greenery kind of reflects positive light and it's just beautiful to shoot back there. If you have access to a private backyard, if there's a park near your house that's quiet that you feel safe and comfortable filming in, I recommend filming outside as much as possible. Other light sources I use, clip lights. And if you've ever had construction done in your house, if you do construction, whatever, these lights I bought at Home Depot. I have a couple of them that I got for free from John because he uses them at work, but I really like these. They have these clamps on them so you can stick them like wherever. Mine kind of hang out right out of frame and they plug in and you can change the light bulb and you can see this metal ring reflects a lot of light. We were at Ollie's the other day which is kind of like a big lots or like a warehouse store, like an overstock store. And I found like a great selection of light bulbs there. So you can get, I saw like porch light bulbs for less than $10. So those are gonna illuminate your life. So these are both of my ring lights, my construction lights in position. You can see that it's like kind of creating a shadow just because there is natural light present in this room. But you can see that it's creating a lot of light. It's shining right on me and even though there's a little bit of a shadow this kind of helps with my filming schedule especially if it's raining or I have to f I get inspired at like six o'clock at night these lights really help me so next I want to talk about background and like I said before filming outside is really great or finding a designated area in your room or living space whatever where you like to film my designated areas Filming space is in front of a giant window, and then I have all of this stuff in the background, which I feel like represents me and gives people who may be viewing my videos for the first time a little bit of an idea of who I am, and I think that that speaks really well for me. It is a little loud, but I feel like since it is in the foreground, it's far enough away to not be distracting. I think a good background is important. I think... I like when backgrounds are just blank or with like little little Christmas lights or whatever in the background but for me like my background kind of has like some of my favorite things in here and I like to change some of the stuff up occasionally because I feel like it shows personality especially for videos where I'm talking about a certain subject you can still look back here and be like Oh, that might be serious, but look at this little donut she has. Or like, today I have this picture of my grandparents with a dolphin. But I don't always have this over here. I like to change it up just like ever so slightly just to like put some fun and kind of speak for me and my personality when I really can't. If it was ever more distracting, I would consider filming somewhere else but I've only ever gotten complaints about that and 
it's not coming down. Plus, this is a really good corner to take thumbnails for my picture, which is the little photograph that is on your, your video. A great thumbnail is really important because that's what people are going to click on. And it's easy to just film your video in a really nice face and then be able to take your picture right after because then you've got the same shirt on, same outfit, and people recognize this is a little clip from the video I'm about to enjoy. White walls when I'm watching videos. And you can see in one of my first videos, my video right after I had my earlobe scalpel, the background of my room is purple. And even though it's like midday, it looks like it's the middle of the night because of that purple. It's really dark and heavy, and I feel like it creates a mood of the video that is not what I was trying to convey. So white background, a little bit of me, I really think works out. Another thing I want to talk about is you and your video. For me, and this may just be personal preference, and this just may be something I picked up from beauty school, but in my videos, I try to look like put together. I try to, um, you know, have a nice top on, have my hair like away, have some makeup on, and especially like have my nails painted because if I pick something up and my nails show, there's always that one comment that are like, girl, your nails. I had one comment that was like, looks like she painted her nails five seconds before this video. And I was like, Probably. Does that not... You don't like that? You're not happy about that? So my advice to you, especially if you're going to make a video that might have oppositional viewpoints, is to look as great or as on point as possible because people are going to comment and tear you apart and don't give them an excuse to. So my best advice is wear your favorite clothes, wear your favorite makeup, and if you do not wear makeup, just wash your face so it's not oily. Just look, look casual, but look your best because there's always a hateful eye out there and I don't want anyone to feel discouraged. And it doesn't matter what I say in the beginning, the end, the middle of my videos, there's always negative critiques. Even though I say that hinders creativity, it's not gonna stop. So if you can avoid someone making fun of you or trying to tear you apart and bring you down I say look your best or look how you feel the most comfortable if you're like I love my floral t-shirt and when I wear it no one can tear me down wear it because someone's gonna say something mean to you and you can't let them and for all the comments that I get about my eyebrows I don't care because I love my eyebrows bring it on try to look good get the dirt out from under your fingernails brush your teeth before you film because you are the focal point of this video and people are staring right at you and if you're not making a good point they're gonna drift and they're gonna be like what's that tooth what's that eyebrow what's that hole in your ear and it's gonna it could hurt your feelings and don't let that be the reason that you don't make videos anymore and I don't want it to come off the wrong way I want, I have videos where I'm not wearing makeup. Yesterday we posted a video where John and I were sweating to death in that Bronco, but still, don't give people an excuse to talk badly about you. I'm okay with how I look without makeup, and I'm okay if I'm sweating or in this Bronco or whatever, but that is just my little bit of advice. Especially if I know I'm going to make a video that's going to pop, I try to like, be nice. Back to thumbnails. So I make all my thumbnails with a free set of apps and I'd love to do a woods on my phone video but for right now these top three apps are what I always use and it's Afterlight, Avery, and Frametastic. And Afterlight did cost one dollar but it's the best dollar I've ever spent. I love Afterlight. I use it for almost all of my Instagram photos, like here's this picture of John from yesterday. Put John in a heart. 
And I think that that's great. I can put a little background so he's like in the jungle in the heart. And I love that. And then for Avery, Avery is a really great app because you can put text on your photos. I made this picture last night using Avery. And it's just regular text and then some emojis. And then I upload it right to my YouTube. And I love that because a strong thumbnail is what is going to get people to click on your videos. And if I can do it with apps instead of Photoshop or the other... I know that there are other editing programs online that charge you like $4.99 a month and stuff like that, but I can't spend $4.99 a month just to make thumbnails. So for me, Avery is great. You can't tell that I made my thumbnails on my phone. They upload in high quality, and I think that they're perfect. It does take a little trial and error getting them right and making sure they fit in the frame. Even now, I have videos where the final line of text is a little cut off, and I'm just like, eh. But strong thumbnails speak worlds for you. If you follow me for a while, you can see that like I'll change thumbnails for videos I posted six months ago. I changed my 5 Fat Friday thumbnail because it really was not doing well. And once I changed it, I got 200 more views in like an hour. Just because people don't want to click on things, they don't want to waste their time ever. So don't leave that vulnerable for yourself by making a poor thumbnail or not making one at all. So editing videos, I, like I said, I do not have an iMac, I do not have an Apple computer, so the only editing program, I have a Windows and I have like a, a house computer, it's not even mine, it's John's. So I try not to save too much stuff to it because it's not my place to gunk up his computer with a bunch of video footage and whatever. So there's two editing programs that I use and I'm not going to mention the one because I don't really like it so I don't have a lot of good things to say about it. And I have emailed them and complained to them and their response was so poopy that I'm really not going to, I'm really going to think hard about staying with them. But, and then the other one I use is Windows Movie Maker. And I just started using Windows Movie Maker. John's computer was a little too old for me to use it in the beginning of my YouTube time. I recently, like five days ago, updated all the software on John's computer so I could use it. And I really like it. It's not very advanced, but I do not have any like background on video editing. And all the time I'm tempted to like take a class at the community college because I really don't know what I'm doing. And I promise you, if you know even a little bit more about video editing than me, you are way more advanced than I am. The other video editor I used, I found by Googling online movie editing. And when I first started using it, it was free, but it came, like, anything you edited had a watermark on it. So you pay $5.99 a month to remove the watermark, that's great. But then you can only edit three movies a month. So you update it again, so you can update five movies a month. But I wanted to, for me, I want to make videos every single day. It got to a point where I could upload three hours worth of videos a month. But by then, I was paying close to $25, and for $25 a month, I can afford Adobe Cloud. I really have been looking into, but I don't know how to use it, so that's why I'm a little scared, because when I read about it, it was like, movies like the Titanic have been edited with Adobe. And I was like, oh my god, I, I can't do that. So if they had like a preschool version, of that I would definitely use it but when I use that I found on Google is super simple it's just getting too expensive for me to like justify using it so recently you may have noticed that most of my movies have been edited with Windows Movie Maker the quality is a little less and there are a little less things I can do with it but those are the two editing programs I use my friend at school keeps telling me like Go to Best Buy and buy a video editor that you can put onto your computer, which I may do, but then again, I don't want to put too much stuff on John's computer because it is not mine. All of my music comes from the Free Music Archive, which is, as it says, 
a big archive of all this music that is not copyrighted. It's free licensed for you to use on your videos or however you want. You can just download them and listen to them on your iPod if you want. And you know, you can put them on your videos. Some of them do click because some of them are licensed a specific way. Like there is music on there that you can download for free, but you can't put on your videos. There's music that you can put on your videos, but you have to credit the artist. You can't use it silently. For me, I always credit the artist at the end of my video in my credits if I use music. I love using music. I think that it puts like a really professional vibe on my videos. The most, my favorite video that I've ever put on YouTube is called On the Edge of the Earth and it's my favorite. I think the music and the filming and the lighting and John, they all come together and it's the best video I think I've ever made. Yeah, that's all my tips and tricks and advice for making really low budget but high quality videos. The last thing I just have to say is it's always content. If you can create content that will keep people interested and keep people coming to your videos, then that's all it really takes. For me, my first three videos were shot in my bedroom. They weren't edited, they weren't professionally shot, they have no music, you can barely hear me. But those are the videos that started my YouTube and I think it's all because they were interesting content and that's what pe keeps people attached to your video. Come up with something creative, what's unique about you, share it with people. I tell John all the time, you're an interesting person, come on my videos and that's it. Just be unique and be you and share what makes you you and share what secrets you have and how you get through life or your talents are amazing. So it's always content above everything. If you shot something interesting in a dark room, I'd still watch it. But thank you so much. Give this video a thumbs up if you're into it, if you could take anything from it, or if you're like me and your lighting's from Home Depot and you use Window Movie Maker, let me know. And thank you so much. And until next time,